So our man is still heterozygous for A1, A2, and B1, B2. This might well be the same man we talked about in the last problem, but we have one more piece of information. We know that he inherited the A1 and B1 alleles from his father and the A2 and B2 alleles from his mother. That tells us that A1 and B1 must be on one homolog and A2, B2 on the other homolog. So now we can do the meiosis. The D cells, the DNAs replicate, the homologs pair, the cell pulls them apart, the cell divides, they separate again, the cell divides. We have two A1B1 gametes and two A2B2 gametes. And we'll get the same outcome no matter how many meioses we do because there are no crossovers between these genes. So we've done a bunch of genetics problems. We've considered a number of different situations. And my goal for this is that you've come out of it with a much clearer understanding of how the physical events of meiosis give rise to the genetic consequences for the gametes. Coming up next is probably my favorite part, certainly of module 7, which is a discussion of how the homologous chromosomes find each other in this pairing and how they manage to pair so perfectly that when they cross over, not a single base is lost or added. I hope to see you there.